Washington like no other. Washington Journal continues. Congressman Posey, let's get your reaction first to uh, Secretary of Treasury Geithner's plan to buy these toxic assets. U.S. to help investors buy bank assets is the headline across many newspapers this morning. What do you think of the plan? Well, the devil's going to be in the details. I, I, you really need to know the absolute details of it before you comment on it. I mean, the theory is great, uh, but the details will decide. What how are your it concerns? Well, the con concerns are the bottom line. What's it going to end up costing the public? How, how much further in the hole is the Ameri American public going to go before it's all over? Well, what do you think uh, a, an alternative plan is to this? Well, we could talk for hours about that. I mean, I, I would hope he'd come out and say, you know, instead of fighting over dwindling assets, let's just broaden the base and let's make this country productive again and let's stop sending jobs out of the country and how do you do that you do that by creating an atmosphere here that's conducive to doing business even sweden now i mean sweden used to have the highest corporate income tax in the world they're down to like twenty two percent we're still at thirty five percent we have high uh... wages we have high environmental standards uh, it, there's not a whole lot of incentive uh... with the highest corporate income tax in the world i think uh... for other companies who want to do business here. There's a lot of logic if, if you're in the boardroom to say, look, if we have to make a product, we can probably make it cheaper with less hassle and pay less taxes if we do it somewhere else besides the United States of America. And, and our standard of living is based upon our gross domestic product, like it or not. A uh, service industry doesn't add to the GDP. You have to make things. I was at a bipartisan uh, meeting last night. We listened to Vokler and Lindsay, uh, and essentially that was the bottom line of what they said. Uh, we have to do something about the GDP. We can't do it with service. We can't swap it, uh, borrow from Peter to pay Paul. That's not going to move us forward. We have to create jobs. We have to create products to have this economy truly moving again. The Obama administration has said, yes, we do need to deal with jobs, and that's why they pushed this uh, economic stimulus bill. But they have said that we specifically have to focus on these toxic assets and we have to get credit moving again. And they believe this is the only way to do it. Um, how, your reaction to that and also how much toxic, toxic assets do you think are out there? Well, I, I don't know how many toxic assets are out there. Uh, there's a lot of gamesmanship now. When you start talking about buying people's uh, mortgages out of reducing the amount of their mortgages or giving a judge the authority uh, to change how much you owe, certainly there are people who would want to game that. Quite a few people who would want to game that uh, because they would want to be eligible for this reduction too. So, I mean, I have personally heard about people who said, hey, I've stopped making my mortgage payments. I'm going to get my mortgage reduced under this new plan. Congressman Posey will be with us this morning until about uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. If you're a Democrat, dial 202-737-0002, Republicans 202-737-0001, and Independents 202-628-0205. What will you ask Treasury Secretary Geithner today and Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke? What will you focus on? Well, I'll develop my questions based on what their statements are. They usually, when we go in there, they give us written testimony of what they said. They, they give that ahead of time. Often they embargo it until the time of the meeting. Um, and my staff always has questions prepared that I should ask, but usually I end up developing my own questions based on what they tell us live at the meeting and what I read from their, from their testimony as we go through it. So, Well, going into it right now, what are your sort of initial thoughts? I want to know the details. I want to see a real game plan. I don't want to operate this economy or see this nation run on a crisis de jour basis. I want to see a long-term plan. Where do you expect it to be um, in a week, in a month, in six months, in a year? And, and what can we use as a guide to see if we're on track? Not just, well, we need, we need more TARP money, then we need son of TARP, grandson of TARP, great-grandson of TARP, and be pouring money, public money, uh, into a, a badly managed private sector forever. I don't, I don't think that's good for this country now, and it's certainly not good for this country in the future. C-SPAN will be covering the hearing live at 10 a.m. Eastern Time here on C-SPAN 3 and uh, C-SPAN.org as well as C-SPAN Radio. Fort Pierce, Florida, Republican line. You're up first. Go ahead. Hey, good morning. Um, I'm going to elaborate on uh, what the congressman was saying there about cutting the federal taxes, uh, cutting corporate taxes, and... Uh, by the way, thanks for C-SPAN. You're awesome. And um, if you cut them in half, we are the second highest in the world behind Japan, which, and we see how that works for them. And if we cut them in half, instead of giving this bailout, that money stays in the banks, increases their solvency. It, um, it, it banks do 
not run on just capital. They run on uh, ratio capital and deposits to their acquired assets. Congressman? Well, I, th I think he's right on target. I mean, and, and you look at Japan, who has the highest in the world, and I didn't realize Japan did. I thought we were the highest when I looked down the list of, of all the different countries. You know, Japan was in the same position we were 10 years ago, basically, and, and economists have said Japan lost a decade. An economic decade is lost. If you hold the magnitude of our crisis up to the magnitude of Japan's crisis, you're looking at a loss three decades. I won't, I, in my lifetime, I won't see us come out of this unless we do some serious systematic uh, fundamental changes in what we're doing. Borrowing our way out of debt is not going to work. I wish it would. I mean, I'd like to say I'm, you know, I'm supportive of this, and I'm real bipartisan, but it's not, you can't borrow your way out of debt. You can't reduce the gross domestic product and expect life to get better. Um, future generations are going to be paying terribly for this unless we turn this thing around the right way. Ottawa, Indiana, Democrats line. Good morning. I'm sorry, it's Ottumwa, Iowa. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, no, I'm just so upset. Ooh, I'm so upset at, Ms. at Representative Posey. Why don't you suggest to all of the corporate corporations that don't want to keep their money here, don't take their families and move over where they can live better life, if they get better over there, you know, why don't you uh, suggest to them that they try working for the American people? What's your response? Well, <clears throat> that's, that's a common misconception that I, that I hear frequently. You know, let's suppose uh, they, have, they add a dime bread tax. Do you think the corporation is going to say, okay, you got us. We're going to take an extra dime off of every loaf of bread and pay this tax? Of course they're not. The corporation is going to say, all right, we're going to add the tax plus our overhead and profit margin, we're going to increase the price of every loaf of bread 20 cents. Now, who pays that tax? Does the bread company corporation, evil corporation this lady's talking about, do they pay that tax? Of course not. Everybody that buys a loaf of bread pays that tax. Corporations don't really pay taxes. People pay taxes. And so that's why when you, when you reduce that uh, corporate tax level, you, you reduce the cost of goods and services for the people in your economy. You stimulate your economy, you create more jobs, and you have more people employed who make more things, who pay more taxes. Columbia, Maryland, you're on the air with Congressman Posey. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, Congressman. Uh, good morning. My, this is something I know you're familiar with in Florida. I'll make this quick. My wife and I short sold our house. We do, do the reasons I don't want to get into, obviously, uh, and, and, and reasons outside of our control. Um, we made the command decision to be responsible, put 20000 into our house, actually, to sell it for more, work with the bank, okay? Now we owe our bank still about $70,000, okay? That $70,000, though, if that is gobbled up in this toxic asset plan, okay, the government's picking up that tab, i.e., my tax money, okay? is picking that up, taking it off the books, I still bear that credit hit. My ability to borrow and purchase another home is impacted. My wife and I combined make 150000 a year. Congressman, your thoughts? Well, you know, first of all, you're a great American for trying to reduce uh, the debt and taking the personal responsibility for that like you are. And, and I agree it's a double jeopardy, uh, as you described it. Los Angeles, Republican line. You're next. Yes, uh, Congressman Posey, I greatly appreciate your, uh, your comments here today. I wanted to say that I think a lot of uh, people, uh, both on the left and the right, want to see the country go back to 1955. Uh, some people on the right socially and unfortunately in terms of racial relations, but uh, people on the left economically. And with regard to the economics, um, you know, the, the country in 1955 with this huge uh, you know, bureaucratic state and the New Deal programs and the GI Bill and these high taxes that came out of the New Deal, um, that was sort of a, uh, that was a temporary trans, uh, you know, uh, transitional point for the country. Those New Deal programs did not get us out of the Great Depression, and the, um, uh, even World War II did not get us out of the Great Depression. As everyone knows, we had a recession right after the end of the, the war. It was the fact that Europe and Japan were bombed and destroyed, and they had to 
buy American goods because the United States, Canada, and Sweden were the only countries that were not destroyed in the war. And, you know, uh, the powerful unions and the corporations could pass on constant, uh, you know, uh, price increases and inefficiencies and non-competitiveness to the consumers. But it, it, we remember the stagnation we felt in the 1970s and corporate America and the general decline of America. And that came out of the fact that these countries had rebuilt their economies and were grossly undercutting American uh, production and uh, corporations. And, you know, in the, in the 50s and the 60s, America was, you know, 50% of the world market. Today, it's only 20% of the world market. If I'm an American, produ if I'm a producer, am I going to give up 80% uh, of the world market for 20% to stay here in America and produce goods in America because I love America so much? Even if I do, my shareholders are going to boot me out of the company. Congressman? Well, your points are very good. In 1955, we weren't in the global economy that we are now. The whole game's changed. In 1955, students in a classroom could look around the class, and they could see who their competition was for a job or leadership. Uh, today, you have to look around the world. The minimum wage is set in Bangladesh or somewhere, who knows where. And, and we have to compete with that. Now, we're still the... the the greatest country in the world. We have the greatest abilities. We have the greatest technology. We don't want to lose that edge. Um, and, and the way we do that, of course, is to empower this industry to continue moving forward. And we, and we continue to, uh, uh, to educate people. We're not known as that necessarily the hardest working country in the world, but, but we're, we're uh, some of the most industrious. And uh, our, our system has shown, obviously, if you look at the former Soviet Union, who was going the other way, uh, that our system is, is more enduring, it's more productive. I remember when uh, President Kennedy said we're going to put a, moon in the, a man on the moon and return him safely to the Earth within a decade. Uh, being from the Space Coast, I was excited about that. I love to talk about the benefits of space, everything from GPS, laptops, cell phones, to Velcro. But, but um, you know, later it came out that uh, when they started undoing the president's uh, papers, he had said, well, I'm not really that excited about going to the moon. I just want to prove that capitalism works better than socialism or communism, and we could do it. And he was right, and he succeeded. And I hope that we'll take another direction like that. Wallingford, Connecticut, Democrats line. Yes, good morning. How are you this morning? Wonderful. Uh, uh, I just want to ask you a question. On Hardball last night with Chris Matthews, he had two investigative reporters on, and they, were, uh, they investigated these banks that are giving uh, donations to all these uh, politicians, high-ranked high politicians in Washington, especially um, uh, on these finance committees and so forth that handle, handle the money and dole out the money to, uh, to all of these banks. And uh, I'd just like to know if you received any of this uh, money from the banks or... Have you, Congressman? Uh, I saw a list. Somebody exposed uh, Congress, and I think I got thirty-five hundred dollars from banks. I think that's what it had on that list from the from the subjects. And will you give it back, or or what do you plan? No, I probably won't. I don't even know which banks gave it to me. Okay. Arlington, Virginia, Independent Line. Uh, thanks, C-SPAN, for taking my call. I I I just want. I, I think Republicans have this big if. Everything is a big if. If you gave tax breaks to corporation, they're going to trickle it down and everybody's going to be happy because they're good people. And I, we know that um, we can't compete with the cheap labor overseas. And I, I, I want to ask the senator if he would support, since he wants to create jobs, if he would support companies that keep jobs here in America we will, I think the American people would be willing to give them this tax break. But as soon as you take one job overseas, your taxes go back up to 60%. I don't think that anything's wrong with that, and I think the American people would support that. Well, that, that's the whole concept. If, if, we, if we have a lower tax rate, uh, corporate tax rate, it doesn't help you if you're located in China or you're doing all your business in China. Uh, it only helps you if you're doing business here. At today's hearing before the House Financial